Welcome back to Honest News. As I was reading the story of Joseph, I saw some things that I haven't seen before. And I want to share some things with you that the Holy Spirit made real to me, that showed these things to me so I can show them to you. Genesis chapter 43, beginning with verse 16. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. <clears throat> now, if you don't know the backstory, if you haven't read the context, if you don't know the story, you do well to stop this message and go read Genesis concerning Joseph, his whole life, up to this point, so that you'll understand what this message is about. For you that do understand and you that do have a knowledge of Joseph's life and how he was sold by his brethren, his brethren that were actually not his real brothers, they were of another mother, <clears throat> but you go ahead and read that story before you listen to the message and you'll get a whole lot more out of it. When Joseph saw Benjamin, Benjamin, is his, is, this is his real brother from the same mother. Are you listening? Now, all the boys have the same dad, Jacob, but they don't have the same mother. In in. Our culture here in America, we call this a stepbrother or stepsister, half-brother, half-sister. And so these other brothers from the other mother, which was Leah, they don't like Joseph. And mostly they don't like him for his dreams. They don't like when he shares his dreams but more than that, they don't like the favoritism that Jacob shows to Joseph. Are you listening? Many of you know the story how Jacob made a coat, a beautiful coat of colors for Joseph, and they were envious of that. So without question... They were envious of the love that Jacob had for Joseph. Without question, this is because Jacob loved Rachel more than he loved Leah. And that love that he had for Rachel, without question, is revealed in his love for Joseph and Benjamin. <clears throat> when we pick up this story... Joseph has been sold into slavery. And uh, he was thrown in a pit first by his brothers. They were going to kill him. But uh, one of the other brothers there talked him out of it. I believe it was Judah. One of them. I can't remember which one off the top of my head, but... One of the brothers talked him out of killing Joseph, and so they threw him in a pit. And eventually, those that were going down to Egypt saw him in the pit, and the brothers sold their brother. And uh, so Joseph ends up in Egypt being sold by them. 
And I'm not going to go into all the details because there's quite a bit of detail and there's a lot of different things that could be shared. It's easier for you just to go read before you listen to this message. Benjamin, at the request of Joseph, has asked for his brother Benjamin to come down to Egypt. He wants to see his real brother. And Jacob, Joseph's father, and all the brothers from Leah, the children of Leah, and Benjamin, all believe Joseph's dead. Can you imagine, can you imagine that Joseph, as far as his family's concerned, he doesn't exist, he's dead. And all this time he's been living in Egypt, ruling over Egypt, the latter part of his time in Egypt. Because for several years he was falsely accused and ended up being put in jail in Egypt. You'll have to read the story to see why. For you that know why he was put in jail, good for you. Amen. But listen to me. The brothers have brought Benjamin to Joseph at Joseph's request. And when Joseph sees Benjamin, his real brother, he said to the ruler of his house, bring these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon. And the man did as Joseph bade. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid. Are you listening? His brothers, his half-brothers that sold him, that were going to kill him, that think he's dead at this point. The men that brought Benjamin, his brother, to them, to him, they were afraid. Because that they brought into Joseph's house. They were brought into Joseph's house and they think this is not good. And they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time, are we brought in that we may seek occasion against us? No, that he may seek occasion against us. I'm having a hard time reading tonight, today. And fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. They think evil. Joseph wants to do them good. Anybody listening? Folks, listen to me. I want to talk to you about the effects of guilt. The effects of guilt. Joseph wants to do them good. And they're thinking evil. They're believing that Joseph has a conspiracy against them. They're thinking that Joseph uh, wants to do them bad. Because they're being accused that they stole money. Anybody listening? Why such an evil conscience? Why, why such guilt? What's going on in their hearts? Because obviously Joseph has not made himself known yet. And yet... They're feeling really guilty, terrified even. They're afraid. They should have known that they didn't put that money there, that they didn't take that money. So why are they so guilty? 
I'll tell you why. The Bible says the goodness of God leads to repentance. And you overcome evil with good. And let me tell you what's happening. As Joseph was being good to them, keeping coals of fire upon them, as it were, their guilty consciences were being exposed. Hmm? And remember, Joseph has not made himself known yet. They don't even know he's alive. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house. And said, O oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. And it came to pass when we came to the inn that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. They're not accepting this free gift from Joseph. Are you listening? Isn't it true that when someone has a guilty conscience, they just can't receive good? And they're, they're always believing that that good is going to be turned to evil or they're going to be accused that they're going to be falsely accused even. Listen to me. You will never grow in the goodness of God, in the kingdom of God, if you keep rejecting his goodness. It's either the guilty conscience or it's his goodness. Which one are you going to give up? Are you going to give up the guilty conscience or are you going to give up or are you going to give up the goodness of God? I, I shared with you how the Lord came by as I was praying one day. And he began to pour his spirit into me, and I said, Lord, no, give it to somebody else. How foolish. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. It's the goodness of God that transforms us. We need all the goodness of God we can receive, people. But oftentimes, we allow our guilty conscience to keep us from receiving good. It's true. Because we many times live in the past. How many know the brothers here are living in the past of what they did to their brother? They can't get over this guilt. Are you listening? We'll be right back after this. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, you know what we need. You know what it is that our heart needs. We need the truth. We need to hear the truth. We need the truth, Lord, to expose our hearts. We pray, Lord, that your people will choose your goodness over their guilt. We ask that you bless and that you anoint. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, again, Joseph is doing nothing but good. He's doing no evil, only good. And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. Now, they know they didn't steal. They know that they didn't take their money and take the, the goods with them. They know that. But because of their evil conscience, because of their guilt, they're afraid, and they're living in fear. Listen, 
And, G- and he said, listen, and he said, peace be to you. Fear not. Your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. Because he was holding Simeon, one of the brothers, because the the first time he accused them for stealing and he took Simeon. And now he's bringing Simeon out. He's done the same thing again. He's trying to get them to crack, right? He's trying to get them to open up. To admit their guilt. And they won't. They refuse to admit their guilt. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet. And he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon. For they heard that they should eat bread there. You talk about feeling uncomfortable. Second command to Pharaoh. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth, just like the dream said he would, they would do. Jesus' or God's word is coming to pass. The dream that he received, that they would all bow down to him. And here they are, just like the dream he had received. <clears throat> and he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spake, is he yet alive? You got to understand, people, he's in his late 30s. He was 17 years old when he was sold into slavery. Several years have gone by. At this point, Joseph has children. He's, He's married. He has children. He's a grown man. They don't know who he is, and he's not speaking in Hebrew. He's speaking to them in Egyptian. Anybody listening? They don't know who he is. And they answered, thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance, just like the dream Joseph Joseph had received when he was in his teens. Anybody listening? This is why they sold him, besides the coat of many colors, but also because of his dreams, that he would rule over his brothers. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin. This is his real brother, his mother's son, And said, is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? He hasn't seen Benjamin since he was a baby. Since Benjamin was a baby. Years have gone by. He has not seen his little brother. And you got to remember, Benjamin thinks he's dead. And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. Notice it says, his bowels yearned upon his brother, Benjamin, not upon his brethren, his brother. How many know there's a difference in the body of Christ? Amen. There are those like the brothers of Joseph that are not his real brothers. They've never gone far enough to experience being born of the Spirit. 
How many know you can be saved by faith and still have that fallen nature, living in that fallen nature? There's a place where the scripture says Jesus is not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen? How can you tell me that those in the church today that have been saved by, they, they love to say this, saved by faith alone? Huh? But they can't love their brothers and sisters that are filled with the Spirit? Why is there such a division? Certainly, if they're all born again, born of the Spirit, why aren't they all getting along? I'll tell you why. Because you can be saved by faith and still not have the DNA of, the heavenly fa- of our Heavenly Father. You can be saved and not be born again. How many know that? You can be saved by faith, the Bible says, and not have a born-again experience, the new birth. You got to go on and be and and be regenerated the Bible says by the incorruptible seed of the word of God to be born of God. Anybody listening? But you can be saved positionally by faith. Putting your place in your faith in Jesus Christ, you are saved. You're going to heaven. But that's not what Jesus said. He didn't say except you be born again you cannot be saved. He said, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Anybody listening? I've, I have been around people that are not truly born again, and yet they're saved. But they're the most carnal people. They're so carnal. They are saved. There's no question about it. They're saved. But there's no change. There's no change in their nature. Are you listening? They're just as worldly as the world. They have no change of nature. And that's because they've not allowed the word of God to regenerate them. To regenerate their spirit. To change. How many know that the disciples that followed Jesus, they were saved? They were saved. But that doesn't mean they had been born again, born of the Spirit. Amen. I know this is probably going to be a quite a controversy because there's many in the church today that believe when you're saved, it's because you've been born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You can be saved by faith through the grace of God or saved by grace through the faith through faith and not be born again. Your sins washed away. Your past is gone. But you still have that fallen nature that you walk in day in and day out, and you still act like the world, still live like the world. And that's exactly what we see here, a type of these brothers that are not his real brothers. And they're guilty. There's people in the church today that are full of guilt. Because they've never gone far enough to let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse their evil conscience. Folks, I'm going to tell you, when I experienced being born again, I was a, I'm just going to tell you, it was like I was a newborn baby. Clean, washed, new. You, you can be saved. Just because you place your faith in Christ. But without that new nature, you're not going to be able to live for him. And that's why the Baptists come up and the Calvinists, they all come up with these teachings, this idea you can't lose your salvation because they can't stop sinning. They can't quit it because they don't have a new nature. 
They don't have that born again experience, that nature that, that they can actually live for God. So then they start making all these excuses why they can't live for God. Amen. They make all kinds of excuses. But the worst of all of it is to say, well, I can't ever lose my salvation. But they even say that when they're saved, they've already experienced the full, complete salvation, and they've already been sanctified. But I'm going to tell you, people, that's nothing more than Gnosticism. That's what it is. It's Gnosticism. It's this idea that we, and it's all intellectual, it's, it's in the mind. It's not in the heart. It's not in the spirit. It's not in the heart. That's why the scripture makes it clear. It says that your spirit bears witness. Have you ever been around someone that's saved, but your spirit doesn't bear witness with them? Tell me you haven't. You know you have, right? You, you that have been filled with the spirit, you that have actually experienced being born again, born of the Spirit. You've been around people that say they're saved. They've been uh, forgiven of their sins. But there's no fellowship. There's no connection. There's, there's no witness in your spirit that they're really of God. How close do you think Joseph was to his stepbrothers, to his half-brothers? Not very close people. But the Scripture says when he saw Benjamin... His heart yearned. His, his whole being within, he was yearning. Are you listening? And there are some in the church that the Lord Jesus is yearning upon to reveal himself. Are you listening? He's not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen. But the guilt goes on for years and years, even after Joseph makes himself known to his brethren. You're going to have to read the story to, to see what happens here. I'm not going to read it to you. I want you to hear this. When Jacob died, now listen, Jacob thought he was going to die as soon as he came into Egypt. As soon as Joseph brought him up to Goshen, into Goshen. So Jacob was brought into Goshen, and he said to Joseph, okay, it's okay for me to die now. I've seen you. You're alive. Not only have I seen you, I've seen your children. And he blessed them. But let me tell you something. Joseph was 17 years old the last time Jacob saw him. Isn't God good? He gave Jacob 17 years with Joseph before he died. Are you listening, people? 17 years God gave back to Jacob to spend time not only with Joseph, but with his grandchildren of Joseph. Wow. Isn't God good? Reminds me of what God did for Job. God's a blesser. Even though he used Joseph to bring, uh, to bring deliverance and, and to, during the famine, and he did all that. He sent Joseph ahead. He was working through their evil hearts. He, Joseph said, what you meant for evil, God turned it for good. Listen to me. Please listen to me. 17 years have gone by. Jacob has now died. Listen to me. Listen to me. You got to read the story, people. 17 years have gone by. Jacob's dead. And the brothers begin to say, what are we going to do? 
certainly he's going to try to get revenge on us. Seventeen years! He has been kind to them, been good to them. But see, their salvation was wrapped up in their dad, in their father, Jacob. As soon as Jacob is, is, is gone, they're gonna, all of a sudden, oh, Joseph's going to go after us now because Jacob's no longer here. 17 years. That's a long time. On top of the other years since they sold Joseph. So now going on 30-something years, they've been holding this guilt. Anybody listening? Let me ask you. Are you cleansed? Are you free from guilt? Have you done something to somebody or someone and you're still carrying the guilt all these years later? Do you see what the result of guilt was? The effects of guilt? 17 years have now passed since Joseph has made himself known. And they still, they still question his integrity. Dear God, you know why, people? Because they were judging Joseph according to their own hearts and who they are. And they knew they couldn't be trusted. So certainly Joseph can't be trusted. Beware when you judge other people based on your own heart. The scripture says the heart is desperately wicked. It's deceitful. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? And you're going to judge and you're going to discern with your own heart? Joseph makes it clear to them. You meant it for evil, but God turned it for good. God is the one that sent me ahead of you. Because he knew the famine was coming. Anybody listening? How many right now still living with a guilty conscience? Because I'm saved. But you've never been born again. You've never been born of the Spirit. You don't even know what it is to be converted inwardly. You don't know what it is to have a new nature. Amen. And I will tell you this, until you experience the love of the Father, listen to me, you will never be able to get free of that guilt. The scripture says, perfect love casteth out fear. How long are you going to continue to live with that guilt? Over 30 years, Joseph's brothers carried the guilt. Huh? 30, over 30 years. And some of God's people today, you may be saved, but you're still carrying the guilt of your sin. That's why Baptists say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. God knows I can't stop sinning. They make all kinds of excuses because they've never been 
born from above. They've never been born again. Every time I come in contact with a charismatic or a Baptist or some of those today that say they're saved, I, there's no, there is no witness in my spirit that they are my brother or sister in Christ. Anybody listening? Your spirit should bear witness. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. How many know Jesus, like Joseph, is yearning to reveal himself? Amen. He was good to Benjamin. He gave more to Benjamin than he did to the other brothers. He would not reveal himself until Benjamin was brought before him. Anybody listening? Benjamin's a type of the bride, the overcomer. The Lord is not going to reveal himself until the bride is brought before him. Are you listening, people? And right now, as I'm preaching, the Lord is yearning. His bowels are yearning upon his brethren. Are you listening? He longs to reveal himself. Oh, I know him, Brother Joseph. I know Jesus. Do you? Paul the Apostle at the end of his ministry was crying out, Oh, that I might know him. Do you know him? All those years went by, and they're saying, Oh, now, now Jacob's dead. Our father's dead. Joseph's going to go after us now. Yeah, he's going to enslave us. And it never happened. He continued to nourish them. He continued to care for them and their families. I wonder if they ever got free of that guilt. I wonder if any of them ever got free of the guilt. Or did they go to their grave with that guilt? Because there are those today that are saved that are going to go to their grave with guilt. Amen? Oh, I'm saved, Brother Joseph. That's enough. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Have you been filled with the Spirit? Oh, yeah. When I got saved, I was filled with the Spirit. I was sanctified even. Read it in the Bible. It doesn't say that. There are many in the church today that are like a half-brother. They're like a step-brother or sister in Christ. Amen? There's, your spirit doesn't bear witness with them. They're just as foreign to you as an alien from out of space. But isn't it wonderful for brethren to dwell together in unity? How many of you have ever experienced being in the presence of a true brother or sister in Christ, and your spirit bears witness. In fact, it's like you always knew them. Hmm? You just met them, but it, you feel like you've always known them. Because there's no time or space or distance in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. The Bible says we're going to be like him. As we beheld him, as we behold him, we shall be like him. We shall know him. Amen? And that doesn't have to take place when we get over there. He's revealing himself now. He's yearning to reveal himself now. Amen? Do you know what Joseph was doing in that prison while the other brothers were full of guilt? Huh? 
He was learning how to forgive. Are you learning how to forgive? That's what Joseph was doing. How was he learning how to forgive? God was revealing to Joseph the truth while he was in prison. He helped him to understand, Joseph, all of this, I, I did this. I'm using you. He couldn't give him too much because then Joseph could have got lifted up. He could have got proud. And he could have got in the way of what God was doing. But little by little, the Lord began to reveal to Joseph, remember that dream I gave you? Look at you now. Look at you now. I wonder if Joseph thought about the dream. I wonder if it came back to him as his brethren were bowing down before him. God is so good. His word is true, people. The Bible says the word of the Lord tried Joseph. God's word is true. The Lord is faithful. Are you listening? Nothing is worth. Nothing is worth continuing in our guilt, people. How wonderful life is when you're free of guilt. Amen. Fear has torment. When you're guilty, when you feel guilty, you're always looking over your shoulder. You think everybody's out to get you. You're in the state of, of this idea of suspicion, and you're, you always think someone's out to get you. That's what guilt does. Amen? Praise God. Guilt's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. But there's deliverance. There's freedom from guilt, people. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through that incorruptible seed of the word of God, you can be born again. Not just saved. Not just saved by grace through faith, but you can be born from above. You can be born of the Spirit. And he's not ashamed to call you brethren. Amen. Praise God. I love to be in the presence of real brethren, real brothers and sisters in Christ that have a new spirit. They've been born from above. Your spirit bears witness with their spirit. There's no division. There's no strife. Amen. How wonderful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How wonderful. Amen. Just look at the reunion between Joseph and Benjamin. Read the story, people. It's wonderful. Read the whole story of Joseph. God bless you.